Hey everyone, this is Meg with another current release game review and today I'm going to be going over Deus Ex Human Revolution. Now I want to say really quickly that this is the first Deus Ex game I've played so I'm looking at it entirely from a newbie's perspective. I also want to add that I won't be scoring my reviews anymore. I went that route initially to finalise my thoughts on a game and then realised that it kind of went against the way I look at games. I mean I'd much rather talk to you guys about your personal opinions and not the score. So from now on I'll be sharing my thoughts only. So let's get started. Now, I was going to take an in-depth look at the game's story but it's quite twisty and turny with lots of different characters and themes present so instead I'm just going to highlight the things that interested me and irritated me. Now, the main thing I liked about Deus Ex Human Revolution's story was that it took a leaf out of Ghost in the Shell's book. In the world of the game, augmentations are available to the populace. Now these can enhance any part of your body, even your mind. The human body, however, can't accommodate the foreign material and constantly reject the orgs. So to keep on top of this, people have to inject themselves with a highly addictive drug to continue using their upgrades without destroying their bodies. I say it's similar to Ghost in the Shell because it looks at these augmentations and technologies whilst thinking of the ethics and morals of transhumanism. And the way they present these though is quite interesting. The player is not bombarded with hundreds of moral, right or wrong, good versus bad choices. I mean there are some, but they're set to a backdrop of events and conversations that continuously, I mean with or without you, present different sides of the argument. There's an underlying sense of unrest that the player experiences and whilst there are good points to be made on both sides, the opinions are always perfectly balanced. The characters themselves are a bit of a sore point for me. Well, not really a sore point, but I felt indifferent towards them in most cases. Now, I liked the character interactions, I liked watching the cutscenes and dialogues, but the characters themselves, at times, felt a little bland. Take Adam, for example. He's a Clint Eastwood kind of guy with an intimidating stature and husky voice, but you can rarely see his eyes, which was a nice touch, but all in all, he felt a little dehumanized. I get the sense he was supposed to reflect the player, through in-game actions and decisions, but instead he just ended up feeling a little two-dimensional. A couple of bosses were also lacklustre for me. I can't even remember their names, which says a lot. <laughs> From a character development perspective, they just didn't have it. Like I wasn't too bothered about beating them or conversely letting them win. The pilot was cool, but again, as a character, she didn't leap off the screen at me. This wasn't always the case though. David Sarif was a wonderful character, I thought. The small tidbits around his office and friendly boss man way of speaking helped flesh him out as a kind of hard-working businessman with a dream. Eliza Kassan was another great addition too. She was an omnipresent figure, seemed to be everywhere and nowhere, and she had the most interesting arc, if you could call it that. Yelena was great too. This character we knew virtually nothing about, and she came across as a mysterious, bionic, scary as hell individual who you knew could kick your butt as soon as she entered the room. Overall the story was good at making you think long and hard about what they were talking about but something was lacking and it didn't necessarily help the player invest in the storyline and characters. I'm not saying they let the side down but it could have been a little better. Now the gameplay revolves around pillars, according to Ubisoft Montreal, that include combat, stealth, hacking and social. And the game has a nice balance of these, I think, and allows the player's individual playstyle to come through. Combat could be approached in many different ways. I personally use my tranquilizer gun a lot and used other weapons for more chaotic skirmishes. But players could go in guns a blazing if they wanted to, or completely avoid confrontation entirely. Players can also store weapons and items in a Resi 4 slash 5 style pack. The stealth controls were frustrating for me at first. I felt like there was a lot of random buttons for completely different actions. I know when I first played it through, there were a lot of entertaining issues communicating with Mr. Jensen. Once I got used to it though, it was pretty easy. It was just the getting used to it part that took me some time. Hacking was a pain in the butt. 
I hated it with a fiery passion, but through no fault of the game. I just really suck at time-related gameplay mechanics. On a serious note though, there are hundreds of things all over the verse to hack into, which was really fun to attempt if, unlike me, you didn't suck completely. The social aspect involves NPC interactions and side missions. You can actually get an augmentation that helps you out in conversations, but I love the fact that interactions were really realistic and slightly unpredictable. Unlike Mass Effect 2, for example, in which to talk to a Krogan, the only way you can get anywhere is by being brash and having a sea crush destroy attitude, the NPCs of Deus Ex Human Revolution are more like real people. You have to judge on their current reaction to what you're saying to get by, or rely on your initial impression of them. Augmentations were another key feature. Uh, you earn points throughout the level that you can use to upgrade your orgs. I was quite interested in this until I actually played the game and found out you're basically levelling up. The game boasts different playstyles and methods to get through a level, and on that it delivers. But I can't say too much else on the subject. I'm not going to say the gameplay is terrible, it's not. There's just nothing really unique here. The reason the gameplay is successful is because it relies on tried and tested formulas and doesn't step too far outside the box. But regardless of this, it's a good play. I have to say that Deus Ex Human Revolution is the first game in a really long time that had me just aching to explore the world and see what was beyond the Sarif building. I wasn't disappointed. Deus Ex has a look and an ambience that no other game possesses. I really think it's truly exceptional in this arena. It has aspects from the two futures we're constantly presented with in both film and video games. On the one hand, it's slick, stylish and minimalistic, and on the other it's worn down, lived in, and not too far from what we know now. And the palette of lavish colours and use of different styles worked so beautifully on so many different levels. The fashion too is ravishing. Uh, the seamless blend between renaissance and an ultra-modern look is just great and a style I instantly wanted to integrate into my own wardrobe. I also thought that the use of cinematic cutscenes was a great decision as well. Many video game companies seem to veer away from them these days for fear of interrupting the gameplay experience, I guess, and instead opt for these uncharted-esque in-game cutscenes. And this works a lot of the time, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't miss the glossy, pre-rendered cinematic cutscenes. A Deus Ex Human Revolution, however, made use of them in a way that effortlessly slotted into the game's overall look. The graphics and overall look and style was the best part of the game for me. I feel like they created an all-encompassing world with real panache. Michael McCann composes the score for Deus Ex Human Revolution, and I liked it a lot. I wanted to note here though, that in both the special and collector's edition of the game, you get a hard copy of the score, but it only contains 15 tracks from the entire album. Which disappointed me, because I'd listened to a lot of ambient tracks before I purchased the collector's edition, and I'd fallen in love with them but the 15 tracks selected are some of the best. The score has a kind of Blade Runner feel to it with this lingering sense of doom and danger, which I really liked because I felt that it reflected the dark, futuristic look and theme quite well. My favorite tracks include Adam Jensen's apartment, opening credits, back alleys, everybody lies, ending theme, Screw it, actually, I think I like all of them. It's just a shame that they didn't put all of the tracks from the score on the hard copy. Overall, Deus Ex is a good play, though no new mechanics are really added here. The themes that the game deals with are well thought out and interesting, but the characters in the story feel a little lifeless. I think the overall style and feel are the real kind of gems here, and the score does nothing but enhance that. 
So thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed the review. Uh, please leave your comments and opinions in the section below and tell me what you thought about the game. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next week in my Gamer Habits video. Bye! I forgot what I was saying. <sighs> I had a complete mind, I don't know if you saw it, it's like... Um, no new mechanics hit. <laughs> With panache, that just sneezed. Thanks, Dad. I know I was talking about the score. Should I try that again? But what about the score was I talking about? <coughs> Sorry. Someone's getting a little bit honk happy out there. I don't mean honk like honk, I mean like honk. Thanks again, and I'll You can tell I haven't done this in a while. Ah, got it. That sounded really sarcastic. I'm just, this isn't gonna come out right, is it? Oh dear, I'm a little bit. That's what you get for getting no sleep from watching Korean horror movies at 4am in the morning.